It is Tuesday, which of course means it's time to answer the questions that you guys send in every single week on the Brendan Plays forums at brendanplays.com forward slash forums or in the YouTube comment section down below. You can also leave a voicemail on brendanplays.com by clicking the big green button on the right hand side of the page. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a pretty bad week in wrestling for me personally. You guys all know that uh, Seamus and me, we don't have much of a friendly relationship in terms of my feelings towards Seamus. Uh, I am not very happy, and we're going to get all into that in today's episode of Let's Talk Tuesdays. We're going to talk about Survivor Series. Now, I'm going to warn you now, I didn't exactly watch the full show, and I didn't have a chance to watch the entire episode of Raw, so I'm going to be missing a couple of things. You guys can help me fill in the blanks in the comments as well. Um, just going to give you guys a quick update as well on the channel in a second, and we're going to probably talk about some Star Wars Battlefront and perhaps a bit more Fallout as well, and later on the show we have a lot of questions this week as well, so just a full kind of recap of what's been going on this week and uh, what's going to be happening um, going forward, so... Yeah, let's get straight into it, shall we? So, of course, Let's Talk Tuesdays is available on iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and YouTube, of course. And uh, whichever way you decide to support the show is very, very much appreciated. And I appreciate everyone that continues to listen every single week. You guys are awesome. Now, where have I been? What's the situation? Now, if you've been watching... The show regularly, you'll know what happened last week. I told you guys I was going to be moving out over the weekend. That did happen. I moved out on Friday. I was going to move out on Saturday, which would have gave me an extra day to get a couple more videos done. That was the plan. I was going to try and get maybe one, two videos done so I can have a couple to go over the weekend. And uh, the amount of days in between videos would be so long. But unfortunately, things kind of got fast-tracked. And instead of Saturday, it turned into Friday, and I didn't have a chance to get it one done over the weekend. Mainly because I could have, I could have done one honestly, but uh, it would have been involving, you know, finding my equipment in my car because my car was stacked full of stuff. Like I moved out of uh, college, of course, so I. I packed everything up already, and I would have had to set everything up again. I would have had to record and find the right time to to talk. It was just, it was just more of a hassle than what it's worth. I just figured, look. My video will be better if I just wait a few more days and I'll come home and I'll get it done then and you know I can take my time with it and make it better. So the videos will be returning this week. I'm going to try and get one out every single day for you. And now I do plan on bringing back NBA 2K16 my GM either this week, I'm hoping this week, if not next week, so I want to get that back. Uh, I have started the Slammy Awards video. I need to kind of work on that, so that's another bit of a project that I'm going to be working on throughout the week as well. Um, but mainly you'll probably see universe mode, probably, that's really the main kind of focus I've got going on right now, I still need to try and see if I can get this PS2 recording again, I do have a second capture card, so if I can find the right cables for that, I may be able to record again using that capture card, and I might be able to record the PS2, which will be fantastic, because I really do miss playing GM mode, I am kind of really feeling a bit bummed out that I haven't done any of these GMI videos, because I miss doing it. I really, really enjoyed it, so I want to try and bring that back. Um, if not, like I said, I just need to get this capture card sorted out. I might have to just, you know, suck it up and buy another one. I really don't want to do that, though. Like, I'm kind of dreading that, so I'm gonna, if I can avoid that, that would be great, but I don't know if I can, if I really can, to be honest with you, so... Yeah, so things, um, I don't know, kind of a little bit annoying this week. I mean... You know, it's just kind of been it's kind of been a bit of a crazy three weeks or so. I mean, I've been really busy and uh, out and about doing stuff. I had exams. I finished uni um, on Wednesday, so that was good. So we've kind of finished that up now. So basically, I have a break until March. So if you want to know what's going on in the next few months, what's going to be happening, well, you're going to see a lot of me because I'm going to be bored, I'm going to be sitting at home, I'm not going to have anything to do, but make videos and play PlayStation and play Xbox and just chill out for the next couple of months. And I'm just going to try and work on the channel, work on the website, work on the forums. Um, by the way, if you were affected by the website and the forums being down, it was down for about eight hours because I was sleeping. <laughs> it, 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 as it turns out, I went to bed and probably like an hour after I went to sleep, the, the website went down. And I have no idea why it went down. It just kind of did. And uh, yeah, it was down for the entire time I was asleep. So I do apologize for that. Uh, that was a bit of an annoying thing as well. So yeah, basically everything's going to be back on uh, back on track this week. So we're going to try and get back th- things back in order. And uh, we'll try 
and be on track until probably around the Christmas time. I am going away for Christmas and about a week or two after Christmas as well, I'll still be away. But I'm definitely not going to, you know, go two weeks without doing videos. I'm going to be definitely doing videos whilst I'm away. So that should not be too much of a big deal. So yeah, other than really that, it's all that's kind of going on and um, I'm really looking forward to making some Universe Mode videos again. I'm actually, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I wasn't really enjoying Universe Mode all that much in the last, you know, when the, when the game first dropped. I think I was just kind of burnt out on it a little bit. I think, you know, I would have been nice if I had a week or two away from the Universe Mode videos in between the, the two games, but I didn't get that. I only had a few days. So I didn't really have a chance to kind of sit back, reflect, and, and kind of think of some ideas going forward. But now... You know, I've had a little bit of time away, and I've had a chance to kind of refresh, and now I'm really excited to play Universe Mode and kind of get that going. You know, the last two videos I did the other day, I really, really enjoyed doing those, so I'm really excited to kind of get back into it. And I think the kind of bit of a break from for me has done me wonders, and I'm really, really excited to kind of get back into it. I've been really, really enjoying it, so I think the Universe Mode videos should be much, much better. And obviously, like I said, the NBA stuff, I really want to get back into that. I kind of promised that I would do the series, finish the series, and I haven't played the game for a while, so I want to get back in that and play the game and enjoy the game again. So that's something I want to do this week as well. So keep an eye, keep an eye out for that for me. I might also do some side videos. Um, I've been playing a lot of Black Ops, Star Wars, Battlefront as well, and of course Fallout. I do have another video idea for the Fallout. I know a lot of people enjoyed my Fallout video last week, which was fantastic. I didn't expect as many people to enjoy it. I know not many people actually watched it, but everyone that kind of uh, watched it did give me some good feedback, so I do appreciate that. And, uh, you know, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I might do an, a one-off, a Black Ops or a, a Star Wars Battlefront. You know, just a, just some extra videos, just doing whatever the hell, you know, I want, you know, just to kind of give you guys something extra to watch and just to kind of switch switch it up and spice it up for me and uh, keep myself kind of fresh and, you know, not uh, burnt out too much on the WWE stuff. So that's kind of what's going on this week now. I guess we'll go straight into the Survivor Series chat. All right, so I'm going to be fair right now. I was busy and I didn't watch the entire Survivor Series pay-per-view. I watched the first hour and I watched the main event match. That was it. So... I didn't check out, I didn't really want to go back and check it all out because people told me the results, they told me this, the pay-per-view sucked, it was one of the worst pay-per-views of the year, and when you hear those kind of, you know, talk, when that, that kind of talk, you kind of want to avoid that, you're kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to miss out on this one, you know, if this pay-per-view really sucked, I'm not going to go back and go out of my way to watch it when I don't really have the time to do it, or don't really want to do it, so I did avoid the pay-per-view, and I tell you what, when I was watching the pay-per-view, my PS4, I don't know if it was a PS4 or the network, I'm going to say it was the network, it had problem after problem, it took me like half an hour just to get the thing going, and then it just kept on buffering and kind of resetting and rewinding and just skipping, and it was just all over the place, it was miserable, it was really probably the only bad experience I've had watching a pay-per-view live on the network, maybe one other time as well, but it wasn't probably as bad as this one, so it was very, very bad and you know that kind of really turned me off going back to watch it again because when I try to watch it again later on again more problems so the network kind of failing on me on that occasion so that was very frustrating to be honest but um really there was no real surprises at all at all really I mean you know we'll talk about the the main event later but um in in terms of who made the finals the Reigns the Del Rio match that was fine. That was okay. No surprise that Reigns won. Ambrose and Owens probably had the match in the night, as I, you know, I've, I've been told. And that match was okay as well. None of the matches really that I watched was all that exciting. It wasn't really all that great. And they weren't really all that long, to be honest. You know, we had a lot of filler matches, which was a real damn shame. And I kind of expected that, though, because, you know, look at the card going in. You kind of wonder, where the hell... Are they going to make up for these minutes? There's a lot of titles that aren't on the line. No US title match, no IC title match, no tag team title match. So three titles that weren't on the line, only the Divas and the WWE World title matchup was on the line. So straight away, you're kind of wondering, where's the interest going to be? I don't know why they kind of you know did what they did. They probably should have put the tag titles on the line. If not, at least make the tag team title matchup, you know, and sort of the tag team kind of you know, five on five match a little bit more interesting with a bit more build up, but they kind of just throw threw all these matches together. The pre show match clearly thrown together, the last second. Um Gold Dust returning in that matchup. Now I only watched the tail end of the pre show match. My it took me too long for the network to kind of get working 
and I actually was awake in time, you know, I actually was awake and I actually tried to turn the network on about a few minutes after it all started, so I was all ready to go. I was going to watch the entire first hour of the pre-show, and then I was going to watch the first hour of the pay-per-view before I had to go. And, you know, like I said, the network failed on me, so that was disappointing. So Goldust returned. Um, no surprise. I think we all kind of knew he was about ready to come back, and there was a lot of rumors that he was probably going to be coming back in the next month or so. So he's back, and it looks as though they're going to feud him with Stardust. So, well, I mean, why? I don't know. I mean, we're going to try and dig that up again. We're going to try and make that interesting. You know, you look back... You look back at, uh, what was it, Fastlane? We had Star and Stardust versus Goldust. And mind you, I actually enjoyed the match. I actually really enjoyed their matchup. I thought it was great. Um, but the crowd didn't. The crowd was dead silent. And the WWE obviously kind of, you know, pulled their plans from a WrestleMania match. And they kind of panicked a little bit. And they decided to go in a different direction, which turned out to be horseshit. So... I actually enjoyed their matchup. I really did. And I thought, okay, I'd be down for see another matchup. And um, But now, so much time has been passed. Do I want to see it again? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's really the only logical thing to kind of do with Gold Dust. you got to put him against Stardust. You know, what else is there for him to really do? Is he going to do the whole, you know, veteran kind of thing like the Dudley boys are doing? You know, like our truths doing, Mark Henry's doing... He's just going to do the rounds like that. those guys who just job out to everyone and, you know, be one of those guys. Is that the plan for Goldust? Is he just going to job out in the lower to mid-card area, maybe in a tag team, just kind of do fuck all? Because that's really the only thing I can see them doing with him. I don't really see them putting him in a high-profile matchup, putting him in a high-profile feud after Stardust, if that's if that's what you can call a high-profile. I mean, two lower mid-card guys going at it. So... I think beyond Stardust, I don't see much there for Goldust. Perhaps Goldust wants to come back, have a feud with Stardust, and culminate in a big match, maybe at WrestleMania, maybe not. I'm not sure. But culminate in a big matchup and then end up, you know, retiring and, and walking away. Perhaps that he that's all he wants, that one last big kind of run and last last big feud against his brother. And kind of do it the way that they wanted to do last year, but didn't end up going that way. And just do that. Because, you know, you remember, I think, what, they were in the Battle Royal last year. And they had this big feud heading in. And, and they just kind of forgot about it. They just kind of, you know, said, screw it. It's, you know, we're not going to go there. We're going to change directions. So, is that the plan? What do you guys think? Are you guys happy to see Goldust back? Because, to me, he's another guy. He's another guy who's just going to be in the mid-card. And, yes, right now, the WWE needs... Some 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 names, some guys who have a name and some guys who have a gimmick that works. And Goldust does have a gimmick that works. He has a name, so that's a good thing that he is back. But is he going to have an impact? Is he going to sell merchandise? Is he going? I don't I don't think so. So I think it's good that he can be there to work with some of these younger guys and have some feuds with these guys. And I would like to see him have some feuds with these guys and work with these younger guys and help them out. So that's a good thing. But uh, in terms of giving Gold Dust that one last big push, I don't think that's going to happen, let's be honest. And other than that, there's really not much more I want to comment about these other matches. Um, I didn't watch the Divas match, but I heard it was a, an abomination. And um, there was no real surprise. I really felt as though that, that whole feud was pretty flat. And, you know, we're going to talk probably later on about the whole page thing, I've got a question lined up later on about it, the whole page, um, the line that she used last week apparently not being approved, so we're going to talk about that later, but um, that was really the only saving grace of the feud, and that was not enough to really garner any interest from me anyway, so kind of watch it, I would have watched it because I was watching it live, but now if I wanted to go back on the replay, am I going to go back and watch it? No, no I'm not, so... Um, yeah, so we had the other 5 and 5, and this is where it gets ridiculous. This is where Survivor Series just takes a turn for the worst. So we had the New Day team up with Bad News Barrett, yes, and Sheamus to take on the Lucha Dragons, the Usos, and Ryback. Now, I watched some of this matchup. So, I didn't I didn't watch the end of it, so I didn't actually know what happened. I think the New Day kind of walked out, or whatever. I know I'm very... Not not prepared, but forgive me. I I traveled five hours today. I just haven't had a chance to catch up with wrestling this week. 
Um, Raw for me, I will talk about it later, but I fell asleep during Raw. (laughs) So my interest for the last couple of shows hasn't really been all that high. But um, yeah, so we had Sheamus getting pinned clean by Ryback in the match. Now tell me, please, somebody tell me, how the hell does this make sense? Why the hell would you do this? Now, I'll also be going to touch on the whole Seamus thing, and I'm going to fire some shots. I'm going to, I'm getting myself ready for it, but let me, let me get myself worked up and slowly build into this. You have Seamus, money in the bank holder. You have him come out in a filler, five on five match, and you have him fucking lose. Why? Why? Why would why on earth? Why the hell would you do that? Considering they know this guy is gonna be the world champion at the end of the night, the least you can do is have him win earlier on. I mean, the new day were treating Bad News Barrett and Seamus as a joke. Oh, we're having a laugh, we're gonna laugh at these two guys. They're attacked in partners, oh yeah. And then Seamus becomes the world champion at the end of the night. The Seamus, the guy who was just in a being a goof with the new day, um, and now at the end of the night he's the world champion. Like, what? Who books this shit? Honestly, why? Sheamus has to be probably the worst booked Money in the Bank holder I've ever seen. You know, at least to go on to win a championship. Sandow was booked so incredibly badly, but at least the guy didn't win the belt. But Sheamus now world champion at the time that the WWE needs somebody who can draw some interest into the product. This is probably the worst possible time for Sheamus to be the champion right now. I knew that Survivor Series was probably going to be about the time. I kind of predicted it, predicted it, you know, maybe a few months ago. I got some questions. Whenever Sheamus won Money in the Bank, I was kind of wondering when is the right time for Sheamus to cash in. And to me, it was always going to be around about October, November, December, around about this time because... This is probably the worst time of the year, always, for the WWE. You know, football season is in full swing. The holidays are about to start and kick in. It's Thanksgiving time, I think, over in the US. It's not too far away from Christmas, so a lot of people's interest in the WWE are low. So this is about the time where they can get away with having something shitty like this happen. You know, you can't have Sheamus go into... WrestleMania season as the champion. That would just be terrible. And that is the opposite way of trying to sell a full house um, WrestleMania in Dallas. You know, they want to break the record for the most people in the, in the building. Having Sheamus as your world champion is the exact opposite of what you want to do. There's no way that Sheamus is carrying that belt into WrestleMania. If he is, God help us all. Because that is going to be terrible. So, there's no way Sheamus is going to be champion. I personally, and I don't want to get in trouble for saying this again, I'm not going to say nobody wants, but I'm going to say the majority of people do not want to see Sheamus as the world champion. Now, I've read a lot of things over Twitter and Facebook. I kind of wanted to gauge the audience's reaction. How is everyone kind of feeling about this? And really, it's either, thank God it's not Roman Reigns, or, oh my God, I can't believe Sheamus won it. This is terrible. It's kind of 50-50. It's kind of... all right, I I don't want Sheamus to be champion, but at least it's not Roman Reigns. At least it's better than Reigns winning the belt. And if that's you, well, I don't know. I personally believe Reigns was probably the right choice, and we'll get into that in a moment. But Sheamus, the other side of it, the 50% on the other side, I'm guessing, the other side of it is, oh my God, I don't want Sheamus to be champion. This is terrible. I can't believe this is it. You know, what the fuck, WWE? What have they done? This is terrible. And I have to agree with them, because let's take a look at Sheamus. What has he done in the past six months? So ever since his return, okay, we'll go back, you know, to we return after WrestleMania. Okay, the guy's got a new look. Cool. He's turned heel. Okay. He's gone from this bully character where he's picking on the smaller guys. I'm the big Irish guy. I've got a mohawk. I look different. And I don't care if you think I look stupid. I'm I'm just here to kick ass. Great. And actually, I found myself somewhat enjoying that, Seamus. I was okay with that. A little bit like Del Rio right now. I was willing to give it a month or two before I kind of passed my judgment. A month or two went by, and Seamus started to go, has gone from that character to something like, oh, I'm just, I'm just fucking here. I'm just, you know, I'm nothing. I'm, you know, this whole bullying thing he was doing, that was kind of taken away. And it's just Seamus. 
just Sheamus with a stupid mohawk. That's really all it was. It was the same kind of thing. Same move set, same catchphrases, same promos. Everything was the same except for his hairstyle and the stupid things in his beard. So Sheamus reinventing his character really didn't happen. So really we just got the same exact Sheamus that we've seen and we've all kind of been sick of for the last few years, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean all, I mean majority, or at least myself, I'm going to say on behalf of everyone, I'm saying that most people were sick of Seamus, and I say that because the crowd reaction for him just kept on getting smaller and smaller and smaller over the years went by. So, people obviously were getting bored of the character, but so when he comes back, he's freshened up a little bit, he's freshened up enough to keep... Some interest, and people go, all right, here we go, Seamus, a a top-level heel. Okay, fine. But if he didn't reinvent his character, which he didn't in the end, you know, are we really getting anything different? No, we're just getting the same old Seamus. And that's what my problem has been with Seamus, is that we're just seeing the same thing from him over and over and over for such a long time. He hasn't been able to reinvent himself and keep himself interesting. You know, just changing a hairstyle is not enough. So we've gone from that, Seamus. He wins money in the bank. Okay, you know, he wasn't looking all that great. His you know, momentum was kind of being a bit halted when he won money in the bank. Okay, so then we go to the Randy Orton feud. And how many times have we seen Seamus versus Randy Orton? A million times. So that immediately just threw all the interest out for me and Seamus gone, dead in the water. And all my interest for Randy Orton gone because I was actually really, really enjoying Randy Orton at the time. But then he gets to Seamus and I really don't want to see that. Because I've seen it in the, in the past, and I honestly, I've seen it, and I've had enough. I don't want to see it again. So, my interest for Seamus was just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So, Seamus, he was losing. Seamus, money in the bank holder, and he was not winning that many matches. We started to lose more and more and more. And it got to the point where you're kind of thinking... How the hell is this guy going to be world champion? He's got really no momentum. He's got really no credibility at all. You know, he's not beating these big guys. And this is the kind of thing that kind of annoys me with the Money in the Bank holder. Why does the WWE continue to book Money in the Bank holders as these heels who can't win? You know, these underdog guys who just keep on losing all the time. And then when they win the big one, oh my god, I can't believe he did that Money in the Bank. No. Why can't, just why can't you get a Money in the Bank holder who slowly starts winning? He's got the, he got this huge win. He's Money in the Bank holder, so he has this opportunity whenever he wants. But, he can keep winning. He can win, and he wins these feuds, and you slowly build, and build, and build. You don't have to give him the big Superman push. You know, he can lose every now and then, that's fine. But you slowly build him up, and you slowly give him some wins. And when it does come to time that he cashes in money in the bank, you're going to go, Oh shit, alright, I can see this guy winning. This guy deserves to be champion right now. He is a credible champion. Rather than, we've seen so many times where you go, What the fuck is this guy the champion for? He doesn't deserve to be the champion. And Sheamus is an exact... You know, you know, he's exactly what I'm talking about. He's a guy who's just been on a huge losing run. And, you know, you look at the last month and a half, the guy's been in a tag team, in a tag team that hasn't been winning. They've lost to the Lucha Dragons, for goodness sake. The, the Sheamus and Barrett can't win any tag team matches, so the guy can't win singles, the guy can't win tag team matches, so why the hell, in storyline, kayfabe, whatever, does he deserve to be world champion? He doesn't. Why the hell would he, should he be champion? Does he get lucky on the one night? Perhaps. So really, realistically, if you're going to follow the storyline, Sheamus should probably lose the next, you know, the next time he gets an opportunity, you know, next time he has to defend the title. So, are we going to see Sheamus all of a sudden bro-kicking everyone and beating everyone, and all of a sudden he's gone from this absolute complete joke to now he's world champion, he's with Triple H, and now he's the man? Please, I hope not, because that would be just a disaster. And we're already seeing what happened to Sheamus, you know, we'll talk about that on Raw later on, but, um, so... Anyways, it was the, the tournament final, Ambrose versus Reigns. Now, the problem I had with this match... 
Way too short. Nine minutes long. What the hell? Why was the main event so short? This is the matchup I was excited to see. Ambrose versus Reigns. I haven't, you know, seen much of this. This is exciting. This is cool. Can't wait to see it. I would love to see these two guys feud. Now, the whole kind of interest that everyone kind of had into this pay-per-view was who was going to win and who was going to turn heel. Is it going to be Ambrose or Reigns to turn heel? Who's walking out champion? Who's going to make the big turn? Are they going to go to the authority? Are they just going to turn heel now? What is going to happen? You know what happened? Absolutely absolutely fucking none of that. Reigns wins clean. Does the babyface celebration. Out comes Triple H. Reigns says, no, I'm not joining the authority. Spears Triple H. Out comes Sheamus. Bro kick. Start the match. Money in the bank. Cash in. Tries to get the pin. Doesn't get it. Gets up. Bro kick again. One, two, three. It's over. Sheamus, new world champion. I didn't hear a big crowd reaction. I didn't hear everyone going, oh my god, Sheamus won. Holy shit. To me, it was just like, oh, well... Some people like some people saying, "Oh, at least it's not Roman Reigns." Well, could have been Reigns, you know, could be worse. To me, this I felt when I heard I didn't see this match live. Obviously, I was sitting in the shopping center, and I'm on my phone, just kind of scrolling through Twitter, trying to avoid spoilers, you know. And I was on my phone, and I was avoiding spoilers completely. I didn't get spoiled at all until the WWE sent me a fucking notification on my phone saying Sheamus won the world title. So then, my plans for the night, I was going to go home, watch the entire Survivor Series pay-per-view that I missed, kick back, enjoy, and instead, the the only thing that I was interested about got spoiled. Great. So, that's great. So that was spoiled for me, and I just kind of felt like, I don't know, I... I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go the full on. I felt heartbroken, but I felt like, what have they done? Why have they done this? I felt like the WWE was just like, what have you? Why have you done this to me? Why? How could you do this to me? You know, that's the way I was kind of feeling. I just kind of read the news, and you know, part of me was just hoping that it was a joke because Sheamus is a joke. You know, why uh, this guy has just been booked so poorly. And now he's the world champion. The ratings are down. And I get it. We don't have any heels. But wouldn't turning Ambrose or Reigns be the better option? I just can't see how Sheamus is the better option. Is the plan to give Reigns the belt? Is the plan to have Reigns overcome so much shit? You know, it's so much shit to finally win the belt. Is the plan to set up Triple H and Roman Reigns now at WrestleMania? Now that The Rock... And Triple H matches out the window. Is the plan now Reigns and Triple H? If that's the case, I'm okay with that. That's fine. I like the tease that they did on Raw today. I'm okay with that. Sure. But is the plan to give Reigns the belt at TLC or at the Royal Rumble, have him come into WrestleMania and just kind of have this whole Sheamus title reign as a complete fucking waste of time? Because it seems to me that's the case. You know... Why? I, I, to me, it would have been better if you had someone turn heel. Ambrose versus Reigns. Heel Ambrose versus Babyface Reigns if you had to. Personally, I would have done heel Reigns and Babyface Ambrose. But if they didn't want to turn Reigns heel, still fine. You turn Ambrose heel and you have that big feud heading in towards the WrestleMania season. You have a match at TLC, a match at Rumble. Maybe you can stretch it out to Fastlane. Maybe not. You know, you can do that whole thing, and you can have Reigns go over Ambrose, because we all know that's going to happen. You have Ambrose and Reigns have a good little rivalry there, create some interest, and kind of carry the show for the next couple months with that rivalry. At least, in my opinion, most people would enjoy that. Most people would be excited to see that, and I think that would keep people kind of happy and interested for the time being. And at least it would be something different, something fresh. You know, a fresh little rivalry and fresh heel... I think that would be good. But now we have the same old shit. we got Sheamus. Instead of instead of it being Seth Rollins, now it's Sheamus in the exact same spot. You know, the authority spot. The big guy, Sheamus, with Triple H. Now he has Rusev and Bad News Barrett as his buddies. You know, with Triple H. So they've got this whole little kind of European stable thing going on, which is kind of cool. I, I don't mind that. I was glad to see Rusev return on Raw. Don't get me wrong. I'm, ha- I'm a big fan of Rusev. But to me, it seems a little bit too little too late with Rusev. I think the damage has been so done to Rusev that he's almost a joke at this point, which is a real shame because 
a year ago, Rousseff was the fucking man. Now he's a, you know, almost a comedic joke, you know, alongside Barrett and Seamus. I guess he fits in well. So, I just don't know. I just don't know what's the plan. I guess, you know, if it's... Some people kind of saying, if Reigns won, you know, and held onto the belt, what next? Who would he feud with next? If they didn't turn anybody, and that's a fair point. You know, you wouldn't know, because there is a lack of heels at the moment. So now Sheamus is technically your number one heel in the company. Sheamus, number one heel in the company. Think about that. Just think about that. You know, Sheamus is a guy who's been in the mid-card for the last year. Now the number one guy in the company. That is kind of a scary thought. I guess the injury situation is so bad right now. The WWE is either desperate, or they just don't give a fuck. Either one. The WWE just like, you know what, fuck it. Let's just do whatever the fuck we want. Who cares? Perhaps that's the reason. I don't know. But to me, it's a terrible decision. It's a decision that's almost made me not want to watch Raw. And today, I fell asleep during Raw. The Sheamus promo at the beginning was just terrible. Same old shit. It's just, it's like we're going five step backwards. And we'll move on to Raw now. So this Monday Night Raw felt like a Raw from 2012. We had Del Rio and Jack Swagger as this big feud that's going to happen. Great. We had Sheamus on top as champion. Oh my god, it just it just feels like we're going backwards. It just feels like we're going nowhere. He slayed it with a big segment on Raw. You know, Mark Henry out there for no fucking... Re- uh, I don't know, man. It just feels like we're not going anywhere. We've got all these new guys on the show, and we're just not doing anything with them. It just feels uh, frustrating. Just frustrating. You know, to be honest, I would rather Cena have the belt over Sheamus. I would rather... Uh, just Sheamus to me it just gives me no interest in the product right now, and and like I said, just to carry on my thought, like when I first saw Sheamus win the title, I just felt, wow, they've kind of really made me not want to watch the show, and I kind of felt as though like this is it, this is the one thing to me that could make me not want to watch WWE right now, make me not want to watch Raw every week or like skip over Raw because. I always like to th- see the positives and things. I'm a guy I used to give you long-term viewers or let's look at this. No, I've always remained pretty positive about most things. Now, there's going to be some things I don't like, and I'll talk about that. For the most part, if something's good, I'm going to definitely praise it. And even when something's not great, I'm going to try and pick apart the things that I liked rather than kind of hype on the negatives. But this one, I just cannot excuse. This one, I just do not like at all. And Monday Night Raw, I probably watched about half an hour of it. I did fall asleep. It was, I think I fell asleep during the, the Rusev and Reigns match. Uh, I didn't really watch any matches. I kind of skipped over everything, just kind of listened to the promos and things like that. But, you know, there wasn't much there to really kind of gain much interest interest in me. Wasn't much that was really happening, to, to, to be fair. So, just kind of yeah, your standard average Raw, which is definitely what it not needed to be. Monday Night Raw had to be a good show because the Survivor Series... The general consensus was it was a terrible pay-per-view, if not the worst pay-per-view of the year. I read on WWE's Facebook, they had a poll up there saying, did you enjoy tonight's Survivor Series? I think it was like 80% said no, 20% said yes. So most people didn't enjoy Survivor Series. So what's a good way to kind of make up for a bad pay-per-view? Have a fucking great Raw. Did they have a great Raw? I don't think so. Now, to be fair, I didn't watch, I didn't watch the matches, so there could have been some good matches in there. But to me... The card and what they were producing didn't seem all that interesting, which is probably why I fell asleep. So, no, I didn't really enjoy that much of Raw tonight. There really wasn't much for me to kind of get into and kind of, I don't know. I just feel as though right now, there's nothing I'm really excited for in WWE. There's no one wrestler that I'm cheering on the most. There's no one guy that I just, you know, one few that I'm really kind of attached to. There's nothing that I'm watching. There's nothing that I'm like, yes, I can't wait to see what happens next. I can't wait to see the next Cesaro match. I can't wait to see the next you know, Dean Ambrose match. These guys that I've been a fan of just aren't being used that well, and it's kind of making me disinterested in it, and it's kind of frustrating. I really want to enjoy the, these these characters, and you know, I'm a huge fan of Ambrose. I like, I'm like. a big fan of Reigns. You guys know I like Ryback. I like Kevin Owens. These are guys that I really do enjoy, but they're just... Nothing's happening. And now Sheamus is a guy that I've really talked about quite a lot that I don't like. And he's the world champion, and he's going to be a vocal point of the show. 
I just don't know if I can enjoy WWE all that much. And maybe I'll just have to kind of stick it out, kind of tough it out until Royal Rumble season, WrestleMania time. Perhaps that's the case. But um, I just want to hope. I just want something interesting to happen. I want some, you know, give me some good matches in the in the mid card. I just think the lack of storylines right now and the lack of kind of created creativity is kind of really frustrating and it's really showing on the on the product. And you can definitely tell there's just a lot of filler right now. They're really just kind of buying their time, just really kind of doing whatever they can to get three hours of television in. It's really showing, and it's really looking bad and, and poor uh, on the on the product. But um, so just kind of sum it up: Survivor Series for me, did not enjoy it. Monday Night Raw for me, not a great one. So. This week in WWE has been a bit disappointing. Um, other news this week as well. Cesaro is going to be out for four to six months, which is just another nail in the coffin. It's just another disaster. Another guy that I've been a huge fan of, and it's just disappointing. Now, I was kind of thinking about it today, my car trip home, and Cesaro, to me, is just another guy like Shelton Benjamin, for example. You know, this guy, fucking great worker. He puts on great matches, entertaining as hell, just doesn't have the promo just doesn't have the charisma it does just doesn't have the backstage popularity from the the guys higher up just doesn't have the belief in you know from these guys that they could take that next step so cesaro what's the plan for him he's going to be out probably missing wrestlemania so he might return the the week after wrestlemania what is that probably four that's about four or five months until then if not a little bit after so, obviously, he's going to come back around about the same time as Randy Orton, and Seth Rollins a little bit longer after, you know, Seth Rollins is going to be a little bit longer after Cesaro, so a lot of guys are going to be returning around that time frame, so that'll be a pretty exciting time, probably Extreme Rules, Payback, Money in the Bank time, so that'll be a pretty exciting time for WWE, but that's, uh, you know, six months away. Um, so, Cesaro, another guy who's going to be out. Now, Cesaro being out, is that a good thing for him? <sighs> I'm not sure. I mean, the guy, he's just... They've kind of elevated him to where he's... They know he's going to have these great matches. Everyone knows he's great. Everyone knows he's damn good. But he's just not going to be given the ball. A bit like Ziggler now as well. Everyone knows Ziggler's great. But he's just not going to be given that chance. So, Cesaro being gone, is that going to bring him back? And, you know, they are all of a sudden, oh, shit, Cesaro. Are we going to see how much we're missing the guy? Are we going to see a, a, a decline in match quality now that he's not around? I don't know. You know, will the WWE start to kind of think, you know what, Cesaro is pretty damn good. We better give him an opportunity. I don't know. I would love to see Cesaro being given that chance. If not, like, just give him the IC title and give him a big run with that. Give him a long, lengthy run and show us what he can do and have these great matches there. Like, you know, I think that's definitely what they're missing right now. Now that the US title is kind of... Del Rio's doing absolutely fucking nothing with that US title. And Del Rio, his return has been terrible. Um... I've given it a month. I'm not liking it at all. The guy, great shape. He looks great. I'm, I'm guessing he's been on a few things whilst he's been gone. Maybe he's just been working out a lot. I don't know. But he's looking great. But this whole Mex America thing, I am not enjoying it at all. It just does not, I do not have a care in the world for it. So, the US title's kind of gone from this great title that Cena's kind of built up to now. It's really who gives a shit. And Kevin Owens really hasn't had much of a chance to kind of shine with that IC title, I don't think. So I think right now that's a bit a big thing what they're missing. I think the IC title itself needs to be a title where they just go out and have these long 20-minute matches and just kill it. Just have these really great worked matches. And yeah, you can have the main events. You have your Roman Reigns, your Sheamus, these guys. You just got to go out and brawl. But you have that IC title where it's the, the guys who can fucking work go out there and get it done and have these great matches so you have something on the card that's really awesome and then you have the biggest stars who may not you know you've seen as your Orton's you you know your Reigns your your Sheamus's those kind of guys big show if you have to who may not be you know not as great workers as as, you know it's just Cesaro's and your Owens or whatever and they go out there and have those great you know those matches that they do that's fair enough but you have to have something on the card that those you know, the core wrestling audience enjoys, and I think that's what they're kind of missing with that IC title. So I'd like to see them kind of go back to that and kind of get a little bit more focus on having just great matches. If not, 
you know, if they fair enough. They can't, you know, the 50 rides that they have, they can't come up with a def- decent storyline for it. Fair enough, you know. That's what you get for hiring a team of monkeys. But at least have two guys who can work, go out there and have a great match. I think that's the kind of what I'd like to see with that IC title. I think that's kind of a big thing. I think even the match quality hasn't been all that fantastic. There hasn't been that many matches that I've been like, damn, that was a great matchup. Really enjoyed that one. So just a lot of things are kind of missing right now, and it's really reflecting on the product. And I think a lot of people are kind of agreeing with me that they're just not interested in, in it as much anymore. And as you know, for you know, like this time last year, and you know, even the year before, you know. Even though the storylines weren't that great, even the star powers are kind of missing a little bit, at least there were some great matches to kind of enjoy and kick back and go, yeah, that was a good one. But recent times, there really hasn't been that much to really enjoy, and that's kind of a problem for me. And um, You know, when the best match that I've seen in the last few months has been Lesnar and Taker at Hell in a Cell, you've got a bit of a problem, so... But yeah, I don't really have much else to kind of touch on about Monday Night Raw, um, so we've got some questions we're going to get into, but first, before we get there... Let's talk about Star Wars Battlefront and what I'm, uh, what is Brendan playing this week. And uh, I had been kind of juggling a lot of things, but there's been a lot of new games that's been dropping. I got my chance to kind of get my hands on Star Wars Battlefront, had a chance to kind of play that. Still been playing a bit of Fallout and Black Ops 3 as well, but uh, Star Wars Battlefront, enjoying it. Um, I am enjoying it. It feels like it's easy, but I'm getting... I'm not getting the scores that I think I was going to get. Like, when I played the beta, I was kicking ass. But now that I have the game, I'm not playing all that great. And surprisingly, to me, right now, the most enjoyable part of it is kind of flying around in the the fighter. The fighter planes, like the X-Wings, the Y-Wings. What are the other ones called? The uh, Blanking on it. But um, you guys, if you're, you know, the the, uh, the Imperial machines, uh, whatever. I am bo- I'm botching. I-, I don't watch Star Wars. I've never... In fact, I have never seen a Star Wars movie in my life. I don't like Star Wars, but I enjoy the games. I have no idea why. I just enjoy the games. So I've been enjoying this one, but I've been enjoying that one. And, um, yeah, just kind of flying around in the air. And, you know, these battles in the air is pretty cool. I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying that. On ground as well, the gunplay is pretty fun as well. The graphics of the game is so beautiful. The map's design is really nice. Just the environment looks really great. The sound is fantastic. I just really have been enjoying the hell out of it. You know, I don't think there's a lot of depth to it without a campaign. You know, the missions, you know, the cult missions that they've got aren't all that exciting. I think that they've kind of missed a trick there. There's not really much to that. But the multiplayer is pretty solid. And I definitely think, you know, if you have been a fan of shooters and if you like the Battlefield style of shooters, I think you'll enjoy this one. Um, it's more of just a casual kind of put it on, play a few games and enjoy it rather than kind of hardcore, I'm going to get into it, learn all the guns. It's definitely not that. It's just fun. It's just if you if you like Star Wars, you're going to enjoy it. If you just like shooters, casual shooters, you just want to have something to play, you know, if you're looking for an extra game to get over Christmas time, definitely Star Wars, I think, is one to kind of pick up. You know, if you're a guy who just likes multiplayer, this is great. There's no campaign. You don't have to do anything. You just play online. And I don't know how long the game's going to have. I don't know the longevity of the game. I definitely wouldn't get the premium edition or anything like that. I would just get the standard edition. Don't get the season pass because I don't think there's going to be much, many people playing when it comes season pass time. And I kind of made that mistake with Battlefield Hardline. So um, there's no one playing the DLC, and I got the season pass for it. So I kind of fucked up there. But... Yeah, so I personally would just get the standard edition. That's what I got. And I think you can just enjoy the core maps and just enjoy the core gameplay. And I think you'll get a few months out of it. And then you might be looking towards something else. But I think, you know, if you're looking for something to play, you know, I definitely think uh, Star Wars Battlefront is uh, certainly a lot of fun. Uh, I do plan on getting Halo. I might get that tomorrow. I have my Xbox One. So if anyone has me on Xbox One and has Halo... Definitely hit me up. I'm definitely going to be playing. I finally can use my Xbox One full time now. So um, I know I got the. I've had the Xbox for One for a year, and it feels like I've only played it like three times. But I play a little bit more than that. But I just haven't been able to play it because you know it's not been available to me to play because you know it didn't work for me at college. You know the internet didn't work with the Xbox One at college. Now obviously it's going to be working now. So. That should be good. I'm going to get Halo. I'm going to enjoy that. Another thing that's also pretty cool this week that I forgot to mention that I could be getting my internet upgraded this coming week or two, 
which would mean huge for my channel and huge for Twitch because I can no longer live stream because I could only stream because my internet was just good enough at college. You guys know the stream quality isn't all that great, you know, when I stream because the internet is just not good in Australia. Let's be honest, but. They are currently in the process of upgrading the entire internet around the around the country. And where I live, the internet has been upgraded, and I can now buy that uh, service. So I'm trying to get uh, you know my family to get onto that, so I can get the new internet upgrade, which would mean that I can upload videos ten times fa- ten times faster. I could live stream in much better quality. I could live stream way more often. It would be fantastic. It just would mean so much for my channel because I kind of enjoy uh, streaming on Twitch, but I just can't do enough of it because, you know, when I stream, I like to play, you know, obviously I need to stream late at night, and I can't do that at college because, you know, there's, um, you know, quiet hours and there's curfews or whatever you want to call it. So I can't do that. But now, obviously, at home, I can do whatever the fuck I want. So that would be fantastic. And it also would mean that my pet views wouldn't take three days to upload like they do when I live here. So that would be really cool. So that's another cool thing that's kind of going on. And, um, yeah, so that would be really, really cool. So, yeah, I'm going to try and get Halo 5 this week. And I'm going to try and check that one out. And, um, yeah, so if you do have the Xbox One, make sure you... uh, I don't know, is it a friend or is it a follower? What, what's the deal? I haven't been in, t- in touch with Xbox One, really. But my gamer tag is Brandon Play, so feel free to send me a message. If you got Halo and you want to play, definitely hit me up. I'll, go, I'll get you on that one. So we do have some questions this week to answer as we'll get ready to wrap this one up. So let's go get straight into your questions for this week. Hey, Brandon. This question is directed towards the page Charlotte... Diva contract signing on Monday Night Raw last week, and there are reports coming in saying that the entire Flair family didn't even green light WWE to do the Charlotte's brother angle on the storyline. Now, do you think that this was? Do you still think it was a good idea to bring him up to add a little risque action to the rivalry, even though that the Flairs didn't know about it or did not approve WWE to do it? This is Jordan from South Carolina. I hope he answers this question. Well, to me, I still believe that Flair knew about it. I still believe Ric Flair was in on it. They can say what they want, but to me, I don't believe it. I just cannot believe the WWE would go behind Ric Flair's back. Now, obviously, Charlotte Flair, the rumor was that she approved of it. She wanted to do it. That's fine. You know, to me, if Charlotte agrees to it, then do it, you know, if she's okay with it, then that's fine, I mean, I don't think you need approval from every person in the family, obviously, you would, you'd probably want to call Ric Flair, you know, your Hall of Fame, a two-time Hall of Famer, a legend, and a big friend of the company, you'd probably want to call him and let him know, so if that's the case, if it is, in fact, Ric Flair not knowing about it, well, that's pretty shitty, but to me, I just can't believe that they would do that, I just think, I don't know. I don't know if Ric Flair was trying to sell the storyline, continue it going. I I don't know. But, you know, obviously Kayfabe is dead, so why the hell would he try and even do that? I don't know. So maybe I'm an idiot for trying to buy into it. But if it's the case that Flair was not in on it, well, that's pretty shitty. Let's be honest. But to me, it wasn't a big deal. It's just a a one-liner in a storyline getting some heel heat to try and progress a storyline that was terrible. You know, anything to try and gain a bit of interest, they needed it. And it worked. Everyone was talking about it online. You know, they got a bit of, you know, get a bit of buzz. People were kind of like, oh shit, I can't believe she said that. It was, people were talking about it. So it worked. The line worked. It was effective. So I don't really see the big deal in it. You know, it's, it's a worked promo. It's not real. Paige obviously doesn't feel that way. You know, it's just whatever. He's just using his name. Yes, it's in poor taste. But it's not like they haven't done this before, and it's not like Ric Flair has probably never done something shitty before He's himself, so if anything, he can't really be one to complain. I get it, it's personal, it's family, but it's wrestling. Everyone does this kind of crap in wrestling, and if Charlotte agreed to it, then that's fine by me. Hey, Brendan. Uh, With the recent injuries of Daniel Bryan, Orton, Rollins, and Rusev, do you think WWE will lighten its hectic schedule for its superstars? And if not, do you think that for these live events that they do almost every day, do you think that they can have maybe like 
two or three or four big name superstars host a live event while the rest of the card is filled with guys who are barely used on TV and just sitting and catering in the back. Uh, that might that might lessen the workload for the big guys and also give the guys with little to no support some ch- a chance to prove themselves to the fans. All right, this is Jordan from South Carolina, and I hope he answered this long-ass question. It's actually funny that you mentioned this because I was thinking this on the car ride home. You know, when I heard about the Cesaro injury, it immediately, to me, I felt as though they have to do something about this schedule. The WWE, they have so much TV time. It's in the 90s, you had Raw and you had the SmackDowns. You had very limited uh, TV time. You know, you didn't really get this overexposure of the WWE. So, to me, having these live events, working five, six, seven days a week is ridiculous. It's outrageous. Now, I get the revenue they get from these house shows is great. So, what what you suggested is perfect. What they need to do is they have to rotate. You know, one week on, one week off. These guys need a break. It is clear that these guys need breaks. They are getting overworked, overused, and injuries are happening. They have to work with these injuries. They're aggravating these injuries. And it's pretty clear that these injuries are occurring because they're just over, they're just overdoing it. They're, they're fucking killing themselves every night for this company. So if you have all these guys on these rosters who aren't getting on TV, and if they are, they get the one match a week on Superstars or whatever, use them in live events. You can have a couple of marquee names to sell the house. You know, you put a Roman Reigns and a Dean Ambrose on the card versus whoever. You do that. That's fine. But then you have these other guys who are in the mid-card doing okay. And then you have some guys like, you know, for example, let's just say Cena and Orton and Rollins. They're all still around. Let's say, you know, you rest those guys up and, you you know, you rotate. And this is a way to keep your guys going for the long term. It's pretty clear these injuries are happening because there's just too much live events. Apparently, they only get like Wednesdays, maybe even a Thursday off. So why the hell, you know, why is that? You know, they're on they're on Raw. They can be on SmackDown. You know, you have four main shows a week. SmackDown, Superstars, Main Event, and Raw. So you got those four main shows. Sometimes they work pay-per-views as well. So sometimes... You have five WWE shows in a week. Why are they doing these all these house shows on top? Why is that? Why is that necessary? To me, they need to low, lighten up the house show schedule. If just do one less a week, you know, lighten up these tours. Because if they do this, give these guys more time to rest up. Give these times guys more time to enjoy their family life, enjoy their life, and have a life. You'll get more years out of them. You won't. They won't be so burnt out. They won't have to retire at forty because they've, you know, been, you know, their bodies are destroyed. You can get more longevity out of these guys, and these guys will enjoy working and wrestling more. And they, when they do go out to wrestle, they won't just be phoning it in. They're actually going to try and work because, all right, I haven't had a mat. Now, this is my only match for the week. I'm going to go out there and kill it. I'm going to have a great match. You know, they're just being overworked, overused, and it's clear that it's not. A good thing at all and to me they have to do something about it otherwise you're gonna see more injuries you know you've got Randy Brian you've got Cena who's not injured but he's on a vacation you got Cesaro uh, you got Rollins you got these all these not these aren't just mid card guys these are huge stars your top guys out injured this is not good. It's clear that these top guys are being overworked. And I bet Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins is doing two to three, three matches on Raw some weeks, working SmackDown, working every freaking live event. This guy was just being killed. And it's clear that he was just an injury waiting to happen. And it has happened, and he's gone. So now they're not really willing to kind of get another guy up there to elevate them. So... It just kind of shows and it leaves a huge gap in their in their roster. So the way I see, the only way that they can really kind of do it, tone back on the house shows. Do one less a week maybe or do a rotation system. You know, give these guys a break. This guy, these, this, this group of guys work this tour. These groups of guys, they get the week off. 
you know, they'll just work TV and they get these, you know, live events off and then they'll do the next. This is this is the way it has to be. Otherwise, more injuries are going to happen, and in the long term, you're not going to have these guys around. Hi, Brendan. What storylines do you think Goldus will be involved in in the next few few weeks or months? Because looking like he might return soon. Thanks. Well, a storyline that I would like to see him do is probably Gold Dust versus a heel Tyler Breeze. I think that would be kind of interesting. You know, Gold Dust has got this weird kind of character to him. He wears the wig, wears the robe, and you could have Tyler Breeze be like, "Wow, look at this fashion that you're doing. I don't, look at the style that you're doing. It's so outdated. It's weird. Whatever." And you could just kind of play off that. It, I feel, I feel so that would kind of just naturally fit you know Tyler Breeze is the model you know he has all you know the best look the best outfits whatever so you know you look at gold dust clearly he's he's wacky he's weird he's dressed as crazy you know to me I think that would be one that would kind of fit well other than that I, I don't know I mean that one is just kind of a natural one I think Stardust and Goldust will kind of you know work but to me, I think Goldust just might be his last run. I think, you know, with this injury that he's had, he's probably thinking, you know what, I might not have much left in the tank. I might just have to kind of have this one last big run, and that might be it. So I don't know if Goldust is going to hang around all that much. All right, so we got a few more questions coming in from the YouTube and on the forums. This one is coming from Edgar. He wants to know, how am I going to handle the King of the Ring in Universe mode? Now, I actually had a thought on this as well today. I've been thinking... I tell you what, car trips, if you want to ever kind of get your best ideas, that is the best way to go about it. I always have my best thinking ideas in a long car trip. So today I thought about it. I'm thinking originally I was going to do it, a king of the ring for SummerSlam, but I've kind of got some ideas that would kind of, um, you know, wouldn't really work. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to do a king of the ring with the winner getting a title shot at Survivor Series and kind of do it later on in the year. That's kind of the plan at the moment, so we'll see if that comes into fruition, but that's kind of the plan right now. And I think that would probably work a little bit better than the scheduling because everything's kind of crazy right now. With Money in the Bank as well is very close to SummerSlam, so I think it just wouldn't really kind of work out. So I think it would be a much better schedule if I kind of did it later on. So Survivor Series time is probably probably have it after Hell in a Cell and just kind of have it its own special live, you know, pay-per-view, whatever, and, you know, do, do that. This next question comes from Jacob Radley. Will Ziggler ever get another world title shot? Um, no, I think Ziggler is, you know, the big rumor is on Twitter is that he's thinking about retiring in two years. So to me, I think Ziggler is just all about but done. I think the guy is just going to be one of those guys who just puts on a good match but doesn't get the wins. And he's just going to be one of those guys who you can rely on. And when something goes wrong, you can kind of put him in that position and you know he's going to do a good job. But I don't think Ziggler is ever going to be the man that we always thought he probably could be. I don't think he's ever going to hit that main event spot. This one comes from J-Boy in the house. He wants to know, do I think Braun Strowman will ever leave the Wyatt family? I definitely think so. I think all stables end up breaking eventually. So I think... You know, did I ever think Eric Rowan and Luke Harper would leave the Wyatt family? No, I didn't. But they did, and it was terrible. So I don't think Braun should leave. But to be honest, the Wyatt family, what a joke they are. I didn't even talk about their match against Taker and, and Kane. I didn't watch it because they lost. Luke Harper was in there instead of Braun Strowman. What a joke. That was terrible. You know, it should have been a 4-on-4. Four four. It should have been a traditional Survivor Series. But they didn't, and it just... Ah, oh man. I just lost all interest for that one, and... The Wyatt family, they should have won, but they lost. And now look at them. Where the fuck are they going to go next? They're just jokes you know, at this point. I mean, I know they're trying to kind of do something with them. I know they beat up the, the Dudley boys this week on Raw, but it, come on. you know, Is that going to really be that effective? And even the Dudley boys have gone from you know heroes to zeros within three months. Like, this is... The WWE just has a way of ruining their characters. I mean, come on. This one comes from Quint Willie. Brendan, I have to ask, where did all the hate from Charlotte come from. Before she became champion, everyone was eager for her to win the title, and when she won it, people are now suddenly against her, harping overrated, or she's a tranny, well, I don't know about that one, but and calling, and calling for her reign to end already. What gives? Well, Quint, honestly, right now, to me, I feel as though Charlotte just hasn't really been that exciting as a champion. You bring her in, 
and they immediately gave her the belt. I think you needed to give some build up towards it, and they gave a little bit. I mean, I you know, not that much. But I just feel as though the storyline is just not there. You look at the storyline, it's been back and forth. Is Paige going to be with Charlotte? Is she not? I just think the storyline and the whole team up thing was just not a good idea. And I think people just lost interest in, in it. And Charlotte, her promos have been a bit lackluster. Her matches have been okay, but nothing really special. You know, we haven't seen that great freaking Divas match that we've seen in NXT that we know Charlotte can do with the right opponent. But we haven't seen that. And the match at Survivor Series certainly was very far from it. So I just think it's been very underwhelming. And I think people want Sasha Banks to be the champion. I think a lot of people feel as though Sasha Banks killed it in NXT, and they feel as though she might kill it in the main roster. I don't think that's going to happen, because I don't think the WWE is ever going to give the Divas the right time to really allow them to, you know, quote-unquote, kill it. So, I just feel as though right now, Charlotte is the wrong person with the championship. I think the fans want to see Sha- Sasha as the champion. That's why she's getting the hate. If this was six months ago, Charlotte would be doing fine, but I just think it's the wrong time, you know, wrong person, wrong time, and uh, give it to Sasha, which seems though like that's kind of the plan right now, to have Sasha get in that title picture. And if that's the case, they probably will have Charlotte drop the belt, give it to Sasha, and kind of go from there and see what Sasha can do with it. Because I think right now the interest is just isn't quite there for Charlotte anymore. Next one comes from Edgar again. Worst pay-per-view gimmick ever. So to me, I've got a couple. Number one is Fatal 4-Way. Now, why the hell would this match type that ha- really isn't that interesting at all, it's just a Fatal 4-Way that we've seen a thousand times, why the hell would this become a pay-per-view? It just didn't make sense to me. And it just, to be honest, a Fatal 4-Way isn't, you know, what's the big deal? And there's not much really to kind of be excited for about that. We've seen so many Fatal 4-Ways. It's not like it's a Hell in a Cell. Oh, shit, Hell in a Cell. This is going to be great. It's just... We're going to have Fatal 4 eh? You know, it's just not that exciting of a bait view, and I just feel as though that kind of fell flat. And another one would be Taboo Tuesday. Now, Taboo Tuesday, which turned into Cyber Sunday, the reason why this pay-per-view was so bad, because it was on a Tuesday. What an odd time to have a pay-per-view. It just felt as though the, the Tuesday pay-per-view just wasn't a good idea. It just, most people, you know, I don't know, just aren't really accustomed to watching pay-per-view on a Tuesday. It was a bold risk. And I don't think it really paid off. Now, they turned into Cyber Sunday. And I have no real problem with the fan interaction thing for the pay-per-view and kind of people getting to pick the batches and keep you know, pick the stipulations. That's kind of cool. Nowadays, when they do it, it's pretty obvious. Like, they pick, oh, do you want it to be a last man standing match? Or do you want it to be a handicap match? Jeez, I wonder. So, you know, it's pretty obvious. That, you know, they kind of make the polls pretty clear. Like, you know, it's not really that exciting. It's not, and if not, the polls are kind of rigged anyway. So you can't really ever believe in those. So I just think that kind of concept itself just isn't really all that successful. Now, nowadays, would it be better to have that kind of concept with, you know, the whole the WWE app and everything like that? Definitely. I think a, a fan interactive pay view would definitely work right now. We've got Twitter. you got the network. you got the app. you got... Facebook, you got every kind of possible way to have people submit, you know, matchups, submit ideas. They don't really choose to do that. So I think right now, I think possibly a Cyber Sunday would certainly work in this current environment. But they choose not to do that, obviously. But um, yeah, so Fatal 4 Way and Taboo Tuesday for me were just were two pet views that were very, very lackluster and just not good ideas in the end. Now, that's not to say there hasn't been any others. I know there's. I mean, plenty more, but that's just the first two that kind of popped in my head. This one comes from Blade. With all the recent injuries in the WWE, do you think the WWE should bring stars up from NXT to replace them, or do you think they should use the talent they have now instead of bringing up more NXT stars? I kind of touched on this last week, I believe. Definitely, you use the talent you've got. Now, and I know they're kind of missing some names now that Cesaro's kind of gone, for example, but you still got guys there that can work. you got your Nevilles, you know... You got your Dudley boys. You can eat and cut. I know they're kind of established, but you can kind of work them better. You got the White family. You can certainly do something with that, those guys. You got the New Day. You can kind of give a better, bit more of a push to. So there is certainly plenty of guys there that you can use for these other areas of the show to kind of make up for the loss. Now for singles guys, who would I like to see kind of get a bit more of an opportunity? You know, you can fall back on your Dolph Ziggler's, for example. You, you can give Neville that opportunity. But, you know, I just feel as though right... I think feel as though right now, you've got to give, you know, your Kevin Owens 
and your Dean Ambrose's those that chance. Those two guys are over with the fans. They do great work. I think that a big rivalry between those two would work wonders. So I think, for example, those two guys would definitely need to benefit. If they bring up another guy from NXT, they've already brought up Tyler Breeze. Look how well that's doing. Not great. So that's, they're just going to get stuck in this mid-card of Doom, and it's just not going to work out well. So for me, you got to just stick with the guys you got and use them. There's, you can't do this for short-term fix. Short-term fix, bring up a new NXT guy, you get a little bit of buzz, yippee. You got to do the long term. You got to slowly build up these other guys. You got a guy like Ryback who's doing nothing. You know, he, he could be something. He could be that upper mid card guy. You could possibly make him on the fringe of the main event, like we talked about last week. So you got these guys who could work those positions, but they just choose not to do it, and that's the issue. They need to use the guys they have. You got a guy like Damien Sandow who's sitting and catering every week, not doing anything when he is so entertaining. The fans love him. Yeah, they're just wasting guys away with all this talent. Final question today comes from Flynn. What are your What are your opinions on Rusev and Sheamus both for joining the Authority? Um, I think it's a good spot for Rusev. I think he's a guy who certainly needed some credibility to his name. You bring back Lana with Rusev and you kind of have them in the Authority. That kind of works. I think it's a good fit. Sheamus joining the Authority, whatever, who cares? You know, no surprise really. I have no problems with it. I don't really see Sheamus, though, as the guy in a suit walking around with the authority. I don't really see that. Um, but if they want to try and force that, that's fine, sure. But to me, I just think it's going to be Roman Reigns kicking the authority's ass every week anyway. So it might as well be Sheamus. Look what happened on Raw. Rusev, he comes back, and at the end of Raw, it gets bitched out by Reigns. Bad news, Barrett thrown around like a bitch like Reigns. Sheamus getting taken out by Reigns. So Roman Reigns fended off these three guys like a Superman and you know just made the authority look like a joke the first night of their new reincarnation. So what a way to kind of build the authority up. Couldn't they have the authority beat this shit out of Roman Reigns and go, wow, all right, this new group, it's going to take over the WWE and get, give it some credibility. And then Roman Reigns slowly but surely ends up overcoming the authority and beats them in the end. Perhaps the payoff being Triple H and Reigns at a WrestleMania. That's me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a fan. I have no idea. But anyways, guys, that is going to be this week's edition of Let's Talk Tuesdays. If you did enjoy the video, make sure you do leave a like on it. As well as that, make sure you leave some comments. Leave a question for next week's episode by leaving a comment in the comment section down below or leaving a post over on the forums at redandplays.com forward slash forums or a voicemail. Appreciate the voicemails coming in this week, so make sure you keep those coming on the website, brandonplays.com, the right-hand side of the page, by clicking the green button as well. So keep supporting the, the show on Spreaker, Stitcher, and iTunes. I really do appreciate that. It's been a big, big help for me. Help keep spreading the word of the show. And uh, I apologize for the lack of uploads this week. I'm going to be getting back in the swing of things in the next couple of weeks. And uh, looking forward to uh, hearing your thoughts and opinions about Survivor Series. I know I went on a bit of a rant this week about Seamus, but that guy just grinds my gears. He just... The thought of a Seamus title run has been giving me nightmares for weeks, and now it's actually happening. So I, I am living a nightmare right now, and I'm just hoping I can wake up and it all goes away. But uh, hopefully, well, I guess Roman Reigns is my savior, so hopefully Reigns saves us in the next <laughs> next pay per view. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. Let's talk Tuesdays, and I hope you all have a great week, and I'll see you all next Tuesday. <laughs>